ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Greetings and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back indeed. It is me, of course, your buddy Osaga G here. And today I have great pleasure to be reviewing another anime series once again. This one is called High Score Girl, and it is also getting released on Netflix on December 24th. And it is also animated by the same studio, JC Staff, that did Backstreet Girls, which I reviewed last time on the channel. And like Backstreet Girls, there are certain criticisms to be had for the animation quality of JC Staff, which we'll get into in a second. So, What is this anime about? What is the setting? Is it worth watching? So, these are the main questions always. So, first of all, it is a 3D anime set in the 90s as a romantic comedy between, well, the high school girl and the main character of the series, Yaguchi, Haruo Yaguchi. And essentially, it is also kind of like the sort of a historic of the Japanese arcade scene because in Japan, The arcades were very popular back in the day, and a lot of people, I don't know, maybe it has something to do with financial reasons, that not a lot of old people, you know, own their own machines at home. So a lot of people played in the arcades, and this was a lot more common in Japan. And obviously, it was a culture also that existed in places like America, but I would argue that it was biggest in Japan, and now they're like, Having pachinko machines and arcades do exist still in Japan and they are somewhat, you know, profitable enterprise still. However, not maybe as big as they used to be in this golden era of 80s and the 90s. And there are some time skips that occur in the anime. I think it starts where something like 86 or 84 even. And then it goes all the way to 95. You can see actually the main characters grow up a bit and end up in high school and everything like that, which is kind of neat. And they, the reason why it's 3D, obviously budget concerns, but also the fact that it really fits kind of into the style because they show a lot of footage, show a lot of footage. Of, of these games like Street Fighter, Tekken, Virtua Fighter. I don't even remember all the games that they featured. They show actual gameplay footage. And there was a, some type of a lawsuit on it with the, the manga publishing Square Enix and everything like that because of it. But I mean, it's a free promotion, truly, uh, for SNK and Capcom and Bandai Namco, whoever owns these games these days. And because, you know, you're getting your games featured. On the anime, and then people will have nostalgia feels and they will buy them, or they will get some like remastered edition, or they get entered to the whole genre from its newest title, you know. And <clears throat> in a lot of ways, it's actually kind of cute romantic comedy, and、uh, I do appreciate also the history aspect because Yaguchi. He is this sort of a well, big gaming geek and he knows all the details about these newest games and these secret moves in these fighting games. And he is like a true enthusiast and he goes into detail, like explaining some of the moves and characters and some like these Easter egg type of things in these games. So it was also very educational in certain aspects, even if you would not appreciate the story of the anime. And. As I kind of told already on the premise, it is about the girl,、um, Akira Ono, who is、uh, you know, the daughter of the Ono Saibatsu, which is this is like a rich, powerful, multi talented you know, family essentially. And she has a very like, a strict upbringing, but she is somehow like this amazing gamer at the one point, but she has to take like, piano lessons and everything like that. And they kind of sort up like bond on the gaming thing for Yaguchi. He, he loses to Ono. And this is like obviously a big, big, big thing because you、uh, can't lose to a girl in a game, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's a very a big hit for manhood for us gamers. So you don't want <laughs> to get humiliated by a girl in a game, obviously. So as I, as I was saying, you know, it is very important to, you know, establish that it's kind of. Interesting dynamic in that sense where Ono doesn't talk, so it's a lot of expressions on her face and like mumbling and shouting and you know, growling voices.、Uh, this is、um, 
kind of weird to me. I think at some point she has to say something where the dialogue can't be just that Yaguchi understands her all the fucking time. I mean, she doesn't understand her all the time, but to me it's really weird to make these mute characters. But that's always been the thing with like Japanese JRPGs for so long time, like making mute characters. I absolutely hate this. Sometimes, yeah, you can have a mute character, but she's not mute. She just doesn't speak, which is the dumb thing about it. Like, yeah, you should be able to create mute characters, but make them truly mute, not just characters who just do weird facial expressions. And then there's the another main girl, um, Hiraka, or Koharu is more more you know used on the anime, and she is also a girl who develops a bit of an interest for Yaguchi as uh, you know Ona will depart from Japan, will go overseas to study or some shit. And then it doesn't become like a ha- harem of sorts, but it becomes uh, two girls competing for the same guy. And I don't really like that setting a lot of an anime. I don't watch a lot of romantic comedies in anime or romance uh, anime because simply pure the fact of reverse harem and harem aspects because... It usually leads into two different things. One, uh, the main character will never choose a one person out of the crowd. It will never have a proper conclusion in these harems. It's not always the case, but most of the time. And the other place is just kind of like, you feel really shitty for the other character. In this, in this case, I felt really bad for Koharu because... Yaguchi was not really interested in her. Maybe that will happen in season two. But she was not showing... Uh, he was not showing any interest to her. And this girl was like, you know, totally fallen in love with Yaguchi. And it really felt truly bad to see. Because in the end of this anime, he has to choose which one. Which one she goes out with. Which one becomes the girlfriend. And the other one is going to be, uh, there's obviously the fan clubs and everything for which ones everybody's rooting for. And obviously the manga has already concluded, so I guess the answer is out there. I just don't know it. But at, at some point, unless you're going to kill off the character or something, or make him have a cancer, I, I guess that, that that's the problem here, that... I don't like this type of a romance story where it doesn't have happy ending. I think the purpose of romance, unless it's like Romeo and Juliet, it's it's there to show the happy ending. This make make, make feel people feel good about themselves and make people believe that there's somebody for someone. But this sort of a harem fantasy and Japanese animation studios something that Miyazaki has criticized them, that they have no understanding how women are like and how real people are in real life, that they are sort of captured in this sort of a fantasy world of an idea how women is, and it doesn't reflect at all the realities of the situation, which is... um, I mean, that should, that should be a video of its own to talk about the female characters in anime. And I will do a separate video about it. So I won't go into it, into it in this video. But, I mean, from, from a romantic perspective, it is a very cute anime. And it grow on me. And I really like the ending song and the opening song of this anime. The ending song is very, very good. Something that I would listen outside of this anime for sure. And the animation, obviously, as I said earlier, it's 3D and it kind of makes sense with the games and everything. It does look kind of bad at times. It, it doesn't look super clunky like in Berserk 2016. I mean, you can get passed on it. If you just kind of um, immerse it, it yourself in the romance and other aspects and don't focus so much on animation. That's something you always need to do. If there's a bad aspect in some anime, you just need to get a focus on other stuff. But sometimes it can be really, really bad where it prevents you from watching it. It can be, you know, bad dub or... Um, not Japanese dub or whatever, but I mean, High Score Girl is actually pretty good. It's a bit of an underrated show of the season, kind of like a dark horse of its own, but I think it was actually pretty good, and the insight into the gaming industry, the arcade industry, was interesting, and I learned about games that I've never played before and never seen before, and, you know, it was interesting. And it has a bit of, like, esports elements in there, too, like tournaments where he played in, and I don't know how how far the show will develop from now on. Like, will it have time skips to the 2000s or something, where, like, they're adults or something, and they're playing at some... Um, 
what's the fighting game? Oh my god, I can't remember the fighting game tournament. Evo, yeah, Evo, Evo Japan or something, I don't know. But um, yeah, may maybe only criticism that I truly have for the show is the romance angle, but the show doesn't conclude here, so I don't know how they're gonna do it. Maybe they do a brilliant fix-up for it. Maybe they introduce another male character who's gonna be interest for another, another, an another for the girls or something, and everybody's happy in the end. I don't know, but... Uh, you know, it's pretty good. Animation is a bit sloppy at times, but I think it's patched, patched up quite a lot by the gaming uh, footage. And romance elements are pretty nice and cool and neat at the same time. And, you know, you kind of feel for the characters. And, and uh, you know, there's some good quality comedy there too. I'm going to admit that there were a couple of scenes where I actually laughed. And, you know, I think it has some clever stuff writing there because sometimes... The comedy can be kind of cliche, but it doesn't, like, have... There's not, like, you know, the guy falling on the boobs or the top of the girl or anything stupid like that. So, I, I think it uh, has avoided pretty well these anime cliches, so to speak. But, you know, enough about this babbling and, you know, ranting around there and there. Overall, it's pretty good anime, even though it's 3D. I mean, even if it would have been 2D, I don't think it would have made a lot of difference. It's not type of action anime, anyhow. And I think the 3D style kind of worked out, actually, in some of the scenes uh, pretty well. And as obviously, stay subscribed to the channel for more anime reviews. And if you want to see High Score Girl, obviously, it's going to be available on December 24th, as I said. And stay tuned for more reviews on the channel. And I'll see you guys soon.